Thank you so much for worshiping with us on our church online. Today is a very special weekend because this is a Chinese New Year. It is a very important traditional Chinese holiday. It is also known as the Spring Festival or Chun Jie in Cantonese, Chun Ji. It is a time to celebrate the beginning of spring. Today, Yvonne and I, we greet you. Sing Yen Kuai Le. San Tai Kin Hong, Sun in Pai Lok. Spring is a season that comes after winter. Where snow and ice melt away, the weather gets warmer, the days get longer, the nights get shorter. You can see rainbow in the sky, and you can even hear the birds singing sweet songs. The animals wake up from hibernation. The grass and plants start to grow again. The flowers begin to bloom. Spring is a great time to enjoy outdoor activities in the sunshine. It is also a time when people start working in the garden. People get busy again. You begin to see activities all around. Now, spiritually, spring is here as well. And we are to celebrate the new life that is about to spring forth. And what is this new life, you ask? I want us to turn to a passage of scripture found in the Bible, that points to, refers to a spring season spiritually, all right? So let us look at the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 10 to verse 13. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. For behold, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree ripens its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. Did you notice that this text begins with God speaking and saying? Yes, literally. The two words here, speaking and saying, my beloved speaks and say to me. Notice the double emphasis here. God is speaking and saying something to us during these very unique, unusual and unprecedented times. But are we listening? God is speaking. He is saying something to us. At this point in time, my question is, for all of us, are we listening? I heard a story, an old man goes to see his doctor with a complaint that his wife cannot hear. And the doctor advised him, you need to test your wife first. Stand far behind her and ask her a question. Then start going closer to her and you will see how close you will get when she could hear you. The old man agrees and ran home quickly and seeing his wife making dinner in the kitchen, he shouted, Honey, standing 20 feet away, what are we having for dinner? He asked. The wife did not respond, so he tries again, but this time closer, 15 feet away from her, and still no answer from her at the kitchen. He stands 10 feet away now and asks again, no answer. Finally, he is five feet away from her. Honey, what are we having for dinner? The wife replied, I've told you four times, spaghetti. <laughs> the man has hearing problems. What is God speaking and saying to us? Are we listening? Or do we have hearing problems? Did you notice the phrase, the stanza of the verse that we just read? Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. It begins with this verse. It ends with these words as well. Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. I believe God is speaking and saying these words to His church. Arise, my love, come away with me, my beloved. The verses before gives more context in describing Him a God who is pursuing us, 
God uses a picture of human love to communicate His unceasing, steadfast love for us. Let us look at that verse, the verses before the passage that we read in chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. The voice of my beloved, behold, He comes, leaping over the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Behold, there he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, looking through the letters. Did you notice God is being described as someone, a loved one who runs to us, who leap over mountains to come to us and come to us passionately, urgently and quickly. This is a scene and a sense of beauty, intimacy and also a destiny. There is much passion and mutual affection here, depicting and describing God's great love for His church, you and I. Some time ago, when the whole pandemic started early part of last year, I described that experience as the church has left the building. And so true, as we ask the question, what is God speaking? What is He saying? The church has left the building. And to complete that phrase, to come away to be with Jesus, enjoying His beauty and intimacy. The church has left the building, but have come away to be with Jesus, enjoying His beauty and intimacy. He calls you and I, He calls the church, my love, my beautiful one. This is our identity. This is who we are. This is how God sees us. My friends, God is saying and speaking to us, you are my love. You are beautiful. Growing up as a little boy, I remember, remember I was five years old, living with my relatives in Penang. And, you know, they would call me Ti Bun. That is in Fujian, in Hokkien. Literally in English means cucumber. I was known to be the cucumber boy. You know, meaning simply, I'm as cool as a cucumber. And that was pretty a cool feeling though. A young boy and day in and day out at home, all of them would call me cucumber. That was my identity. I felt good. In the midst of these noises in the world, deep inside of us, there is a longing to hear the voice of God calling us out, describing to us who we are in His eyes. And today, God is speaking and saying to the church, to you and I, my love, my beloved one. That voice which gives us comfort and confidence. My love, my beloved one. The Bible tells us in the Gospel of John chapter 10 and verse 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Today, I want you to know, let us tune in and hear the voice of God. God is speaking to us, that gentle voice, that loving voice, calling out your name, describing who you are, that you are love that you are His beloved one, that you are beautiful in His eyes. And He's inviting you and I into intimacy to enjoy that passion and the mutual affection with our beloved Savior. This is what God is saying and speaking to His church. What else is God saying to His church in this very unusual, unique and unprecedented season? Look at our text again. I want to point out two things. God is saying the winter has passed. Look at Song of Solomon chapter 2, verse 11. For behold, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. You see, my friends, winter and rain keep people indoor and make going out unsafe and unpleasant. Roads are made bad and slippery and rivers impassable, making the journey very dangerous in many places and even very difficult. The sun is hidden, making it the days shorter, filled with darkness, coldness, barrenness, and really, worst of all, unfruitfulness. 
Yes, it is true. We have been into a circumstance, a situation since the outbreak of Corona. World leaders and WHO have not comprehended it and they did not know how to tackle it and to overcome the situation to bounce back quickly to normalcy. We were watching, we were waiting, we were wrestling, we were worrying, all within us. That was a winter season, a very long one for all of us, spiritually, emotionally, in so many ways. And deep within us, we ask the question, how long, O oh God, how long? And it seems like the word hallelujah will never come again. It is so difficult to praise the Lord. And now, in this season, God is speaking to us. The winter has passed. The winter is passing away. And now God is promising us spring, a time when new life is brought forth, new life is given to us, and new activities coming back again. And my friends, my second observation as you look at the text, I believe prophetically God is speaking to us, the flowers are blooming. Look at that text again, Song of Solomon chapter 2, verse 12 and verse 13. The flowers appear on the earth, finally, hallelujah, the time of singing has come and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree ripens its figs and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Did you notice the sight, the sound and even the scent? Smelling it. When spring comes, everything comes to life again. Spring represents a time for new growth. It's a time of birth. It is a time that we are to move on and to move forward. It is a time for rekindling our excitement, our energy about loving God and living for God. We want to pay attention to some of these words again. It says, the flowers appear on the earth. The fig trees ripen its figs and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. It reminds me of this promise of comfort that Jesus gave to us on the Sermon on the Mount in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 6, verse 28, isn't it? Let me read that uh, for us. And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field. Powerful words, my friends. Don't miss the emphasis. Consider, give thought, carefully observe, learn from, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you or you of little faith. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. Simply, Jesus does not want us, He does not want you and I to worry. These words that Jesus spoke to the crowd 2,000 years ago are still very applicable, more applicable today than ever before. We desperately need to hear these words again as we consider the lilies, the flowers in the field. It's time that we look at the spring marching forth toward us. It helps us to remember the promise of God's faithfulness instead of being fearful we look up and we see that God is faithful, that He will overcome whatever that is making us anxious. So in dealing with worries over the basics of life, God is telling us, consider the lilies. It is interesting, as I said, the word consider in the Greek is katamantano, simply means learn thoroughly, observe carefully, Think carefully. 
watching the lilies and the flowers and the plants and the trees as if these are textbooks, library in front of us, that we are to study them, pointing us to a spiritual truth, pointing us to a person, the Creator Himself, God Himself, in light of Scripture. Creation is teaching us something. What is, the, what is creation teaching us? Today, among the many lessons from this passage, I want to point out only one thing that is found in verse 30. He says, O you of little faith. O you of little faith. It describes the character and conduct of believers sons and daughters of God. It does not denote an absence of faith in this verse because he is talking about believers. Believers have some degree of faith. Faith here simply means to believe and to trust God. He is not speaking of the absence of faith, but of a faith that is weak. There are degrees of faith, we usually think in terms of either you have faith or you don't have faith. But the Bible talks about various degrees of faith. In fact, Paul in describing Abraham in Romans chapter 4, verse 19 to verse 20, and without becoming weak in faith. Notice the word weak in faith, not no faith. He contemplated his own body now as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Yet with respect to the promise of God, he did not waver in unbelief, but grew strong in faith, giving glory to God. Did you notice that Ab Abraham did not have a weak faith or no faith? He had a strong faith. This shows that there are degrees of faith. Some have more, others have less. Today, I want us to think for a moment. Do you have a weak faith or you have a strong faith in God? All believers, they do have faith, but they have a different amount of faith. Let's look at other places in the Gospels where Jesus used the term little faith. Faith In Matthew 8, verse 24 to 26, And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves. But he was asleep. And they went and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. The disciples had faith that Jesus could help them, but their faith was weak. It was a weak faith. Jesus reproved them for allowing the circumstances, the, situ the situations to overcome their faith. Again, in Matthew 14 verse 30 to verse 31, But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, meaning Peter, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, Peter, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Did you notice that Jesus used the word little faith when Peter began to sing? Because Peter was doing pretty well when he stepped out from the boat. He had strong faith. But the moment he was looking around his circumstances and his situation, this was when his faith began to weaken. Peter had enough faith to step out of the boat and out on the water to walk to Jesus. But then he allowed the circumstances to overcome and to weaken his faith. In 1995, Yvonne and I, God called us back to study, to equip ourselves in the seminary. So both of us quit our jobs, our full-time jobs, and with a lot of faith because we know that we, are, we were obeying God. And until 
when I saw my bank account one day, we had zero money in our account. Seeing what I saw, my circumstance, my situation, it made me fearful. I was afraid. I was nervous. And my faith from big size faith, it became strong faith, became a weak, a small faith. How often do we allow circumstances, our situations, what we see with our eyes to make us afraid and anxious? How can we strengthen our faith? That is our question today. Well, the Bible tells us that we need to read, we need to study the Word of God so that we know our God, how much He loved us, how much He can be trusted. It is hard to have faith or trust in someone you do not know. The book of Romans chapter 10, verse 17 tells us, So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. One of the things that Yvonne does regularly in the morning is to listen to the Bible audio. And being with her in the living room, listening to the Bible audio, not preaching, but simply the reading of Scripture edifies, strengthens, feed my faith. And it is so refreshing and renewing, just listening to the Word of God. In fact, starting next week here at ICA and with many churches in Hong Kong and around the world, we are embarking on the one campaign, Scripture reading and Scripture listening where we are taking you through the Gospels. And I invite you to join us, not only during the weekend, but every day, uh, listening to the Word of God. We must grow in our relationship with Jesus. Jesus knows us more than we know Him. In fact, Matthew chapter 6, verse 32 tells us, Your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. I want you to know that He knows you. Our invitation today is that you would come to know the Father as well. Through the studying of Scripture, in prayer, spending time waiting upon Him in worship, your faith will grow to be stronger. In this new season, springtime, well, I want you to know that God knows all your needs. You know, we are never out of His thoughts. We are His children. He loves us and loves us passionately. He is a jealous God. There is no moment when God takes His eyes off you. He will continuously watch over us during this pandemic. If we are going to conquer our worries, we must come to the realization that God loves us and He calls you and I, my beloved, my beautiful one. This is who we are. This is our identity. And He calls us to come away to be with Him. It is a place of intimacy, mutual passion and affection. And I want you to know, and He will take care of you. Springtime reminds us that God loves us and He will take care of us. Spring has arrived. Springtime is not only a time to be watching, to be waiting for something to happen. It is certainly not a time to be worrying or wrestling, but a time to be worshipping God and engaging in the works of God. Springtime is here. As we celebrate this Chinese New Year, let us all remember it is a time that God has marked for your new beginning. God has marked this season for you that He will provide for all your needs and He will protect you, that He will give you complete peace. This is a season where God has marked for His church that you and I would engage in the works of God, that we will be true witness in our city. God bless you, my friends. Sing Nian Kwai Le, Sun Ti Chen Kang, Gong He Fa Choi. God bless you.